My name's Colin Schindler. Welcome to London. The conference, of course, is the centerpiece of the activities of the European Association of Israel Studies. And this indeed is the, it's the second academic conference, but it's our third conference really, because we started uh, two years ago with a, a launch conference at SAIS itself uh, in 2011, and last year many of you were at Munich for our first academic conference. I just want to say a couple of words about the European Association uh, itself, and then to Clive will say a couple of words. Four years ago, November 2009, uh, a few academics gathered at SOAS, uh, people that had not met each other before, uh, people that taught some aspect of Israel. And the meeting was a very constructive meeting because that's where the European Association was founded. And what was amazing is that the meeting was on a Sunday afternoon, uh, due scheduled to finish at four o'clock, and in fact people were still talking by five, if not after five. And it indicated the fact that people needed and wanted colleagues, and people discovered colleagues that they'd never had. The fact that many of you were talking to each other is an, an indication of that. Uh, the point is that the European Association of Israel Studies is not an artificial construct. There's a real need, a, a genuine need, for Israel Studies in Europe and some sort of network to connect them. And what is also interesting is that Israel Studies is expanding globally. You know, um, we have our colleagues in the... Uh, Association of Israel Studies, which is essentially uh, North Americans and Israelis, but there are people in India and China and Japan and Australia and Brazil and South Africa who all teach Israel Studies. So we are moving towards this global network and it's expanding at a rapid rate. In Europe itself, we uh, have contact with people, let's say, in Russia and in Poland, but we know of no one in Spain. We've just made contact with people in Hungary. We've got Romanian colleagues here today who have come into this uh, family of people that teach Israel studies. Um, it's probable that we will have our next conference, this time next year, in Warsaw. Now, for myself, I... Um, I've been doing this for several years, and I, I told my colleagues on the steering committee that I wanted to step down at the beginning of the year. And I'm really delighted that Professor Clive Jones of Durham University and Professor Rory Miller, King's College London, have taken over. They're really two great guys. They're really two people that are committed to developing and expanding Israel studies. And the EIS does not simply belong to individuals, it belongs to all of us. Things are developing. We have Ari Roth here from the uh, Israel Institute in, in Washington. Uh, symptomatic again of uh, how Israel studies in Europe is, is connecting with, with, with everyone. But there's still much work to be done. There's still a lot of improvement to, to take place. So all I'm saying is that um, I hope that you will strongly support the cause of Israel Studies. You will attend these conferences. You will work well with Clive and Rory. And you will support them in everything that they do. They have the right ideas. They have the energy to move things forward. And they have the enthusiasm which they will share with you to take Israel studies really to another level. Okay, thank you. Bye. Well, getting the European Association of Israel Studies up and running was not just like that. It required dedication, it required hard work, and then actually from the initial stages, it actually required a vision. None of us would be here today 
without that vision that Colin provided at the very beginning. So publicly, I want to pay tribute to Colin for setting this up. In the and I think it's testament to his vision that we'll hopefully have over the next day and a half some 130 delegates, people giving papers or indeed just attending the conference, from over 15 different countries. It demonstrates that Israel studies as a viable, ongoing concern has deep roots across Europe, which if we are careful, if we have a strategy, can actually be nurtured in the years ahead. And to that extent, I, always, I also want to pay tribute to the steering committee. We have some very, very enthusiastic individuals within our steering committee who actually want to make this work. And we are developing strategies which will engage in more outreach activities, trying to develop hubs over the next uh, two to three years in countries across Europe, in Central Europe and Eastern Europe uh, in particular, where we can try and support Israel studies related activities. This may relate in, for example, trying to support particular workshops, and hopefully eventually if we can raise the funds, would also include giving bursaries to postgraduate students, both postgraduate taught students and postgraduate research students. We are very, very well aware that the future viability of Israel studies across Europe will depend upon helping, encouraging the next generation of students, your PhDs, your master's students. And my great plea, and I won't labour the point before passing over to our guest speaker tonight, my great plea is for all of you, if you come to this conference, if you're engaged in Israel studies in any shape or form, is to tell your peers, your colleagues about what we do. Because the more members that we can attract in the years ahead, the more that we can do, and the more that we can support, help, and encourage, and sell Israel studies. At a time, let's be blunt about this, of great tension across many campuses in Europe, but sell Israel studies, not to advocate for the case of Israel, but to legitimate Israel as, I would argue, a legitimate subject of scholarly academic inquiry. If we can do that and put Israel studies and the European Association of Israel Studies on a firm footing in the next three to five years, it would have been a job well done. So I urge you, act as ambassadors wherever you're from for the European Association of Israel Studies and spread, like the Gospels, the good word. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, so it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Saad Kashua now. Um, I would imagine quite a lot of people here uh, read his uh, column on a Friday and uh, laugh out loud at uh, the way he, he uh, frames words uh, to show really the absurdities of life. And uh, there's no better place to show the absurdities of life than in the Middle East. Uh, his um, series on television, Avodah Aravit, uh, indeed holds a mirror to the ignorance on both sides of uh, the division. And he uh, won the award for the best television series uh, at the Jerusalem Film Festival. He's the author of four books. He won the uh, Bernstein Prize for his book, Second Person Singular, and his new book, Exposure, uh, has just been published 2013. The thing that uh, I find about uh, reading Syed's column on a Friday night, you can get, you can get Haaretz sent to push through your, your letterbox. Uh, there's someone in South London who does it, so I read it every, every Friday evening, and it's my, my weekend treat, is that he shows maps, uh, inner truths about uh, the Middle East and about what happens in Israel in particular, but something that perhaps we as academics who dissect situations, analyze uh, theories, miss, because we go into it too deeply. And it's the ability to show this, which I think comes out in his columns. That's my opinion, anyway. He's going to speak tonight on the Arabs in Israel, the unheard cry for citizenship. Please show your appreciation.
Okay, I, I published only three, three, three novels, but, but the second person singular was, was translated to, in the UK, uh, it got the title of Exposure, but it's the same novel, uh, like second person singular. I thought it, it might sell better with than the title Exposure, but I doubt it. So, actually, I have to say that I was really very nervous. Uh, um, um, because of my English and because of London and because academy people, I am I'm, I'm really very scared of academy uh, people and Israeli studies. But now I feel like it's I have a feeling that I can speak in Hebrew and it will be okay and even it will be much easier. Am I right? I just arrived because of uh, the Kippur day. I landed a few hours ago, actually, uh, from Tel Aviv. Uh, usually, I don't like to land in the same day that I that I'm supposed to talk uh, because there is not uh, no enough time for to drink before the talk. But it's okay. <laughs> and th and then actually, it was the nicest uh, uh, flight ever. And usually, I'm very scared of uh, of flights. And the taxi driver, very nice taxi driver, was holding my... I, I really like it when I go down from the, the, the airplane and someone's holding my name because it makes me feel more uh, secure about my identity and they make sure that every one of the Israelis on the Al Al flight see that I have a taxi driver waiting for me. But he was a Muslim, I guess, because the first... Phone call that he received was he said salam alaikum things like that and I said it's very cold and said where are you from uh, and and uh, and of course Jerusalem is always the answer uh, where I, I actually the reason that I live in Jerusalem is the, is to give this answer when I'm abroad <laughs> to different people uh, I live in Jerusalem so yes you're Palestinian Said I said yes I'm a Palestinian. So, do Israelis let you fly from Tel Aviv? Because I noticed the flight is from Tel Aviv. And then I really tried maybe to explain what's the meaning of a Palestinian who their villages were occupied in the year 48, but we are actually carrying Israeli citizenship. Uh, uh, and then I thought, would he understand? They, they just stopped right there and said, yes, I'm a Palestinian. And yes, the Israelis destroyed our air, airport in Gaza, and uh, now we are forced to fly either from Amman or from. Uh, and said, and actually, to be honest, it was the nicest flight ever because 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 if he knew what a relationship or, or what an attitude I received at the airport in Tel Aviv, which, which usually I count on on these flights. I like to fly a lot because it's usually helped me to write the next column next week because <laughs> I've been writing for arts now for 10 years and it's really very difficult. Uh, I'm short of materials. So usually flights give me the opportunity to write about, uh, about the Al Al people and, uh, and the flights from Tel Aviv. And the security lady, <laughs> she just immediately knew that I'm Syed Kashu. But by the way, the, the last episode of uh, the fourth season of Arab Labor will be broadcasted tonight. You are Said Kashua, come with me, sir. And it was the first time ever that I received the number one, which only a Jewish kosher uh, who served in the army can get. And she took me to the, to, to the desk of uh, business class. And in five minutes, I was in the, in the duty free. Usually, I, I, I arrived to the airport four hours in advance. <laughs> and so, so what I should tell this taxi driver uh, uh, now and to be honest, this one of the to be a successful writer, an, an Arab Palestinian successful writer in Israel uh, is a little bit of a problem because because of identity problems. And okay, so what I what should I do? I'm supposed I, I Jewish people are supposed to hate me because because of the materials that I'm dealing with actually, and also because I'm. I'm an I'm Arab. And the airport, the, the Ben Gurion airport, one, one of the places that I also like to go there, not only for the, col the columns, to know, okay, I'm different, I'm the Arab. I, okay, I'm carrying an Israeli citizenship, but I'm in the line of, uh, uh, of the strangers, of the security threat. So nothing of that happened to me uh, uh, today. Uh, anyway, so I'm, I'm a writer, um, and, uh, and I live in Jerusalem. I... Uh, uh, married and I have three kids. Um, five years ago, we moved from uh, from East Jerusalem, from Beit a neighborhood in East Jerusalem, to West Jerusalem, uh, to Ramat Denia. It's a really nice, circular uh, uh, neighborhood. Um, 
which is very rare if you are aware uh, about uh, of the reality uh, in Israel because it's all about identity and roots and narratives and different stories. Uh, I'm not sure that my little son yet knows that he's, uh, he's Arab at all and um, he's two years old and he goes to the daycare in the neighborhood and he speaks only Hebrew and I'm really very worried uh, uh, when he will realize that he's Arab. And he doesn't speak uh, even one word in, in, uh, in Arabic, unfortunately, although we use Arabic uh, at home. We shout at each other in Arabic usually. Uh, and, uh, and it, was, it was really very sad. We were very nervous because he was, he was born after seven months of pregnancy and, and, and when he was already one year and a half and he didn't talk at all, we, we were really very, we were very nervous about it because, and they told my wife, according to, statistics, to the statistics, only the fourth kid should be an Arab and I'm not sure what's the problem with this one. But, um, and it was that I came back from from, from a, a, a writer's festival in, in, in Berlin, and I brought him a car, a red German car, and then he said auto, which means car in Hebrew, and we were so happy about that, because we, we were trying to teach him Dao, it's light, it's the first sentence that you teach an Arab kid, it's you turn on the light, if you're lucky and you have electricity in your village, and then it's light, Dao, but he never said that, and then we, we discovered that or, 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 without an accent, with a Hebrew perfect uh, Ashkenazi accent, <laughs> he calls me Saeed, swear to God, and it's really... Um, and then, and the second problem with him was the fact that he doesn't sleep at night, still, till now. He's two years old and he ca cannot sleep at night. And when, when he started talking, when we discovered, okay, he speaks Hebrew, but at least he can talk, my wife said, okay, now we need him just to sleep and we'll be on the safe side. And I wondered, how can you expect this kid to sleep if he thinks that two Arabs are ambushing him in the night <laughs> in the flat? But unlike, but I'm talking about my kids because I, I, I hope that I will get to them and their identity problems later, that we don't actually have identity problems. We are okay, and I think that the Jewish people and the Arab people got identity problems. Um, I was born in Tira in 1975, and it's really very rare to move from, from your village. I was born in Tira. And I think that uh, more than anything else, I would say that I and that I'm a storyteller, and uh, um, and I think that um, that it was because of my grandmother. Uh, she was she was really a great uh, storyteller, uh, although she was uh, illiterate, uh, uh, just like most of the uh, Palestinian population, especially if we are talking about uh, women, uh, the Palestinian population. Who remained in in, uh, in Israel or became uh, uh, became citizens of Israel after 48? We are talking here about a very uh, a poor group of uh, farmers, uh, um, generally speaking, fellahim. Um, uh, that's that's the kind of population uh, that stayed in Israel. Um, um, living in, in, in small villages um, uh, on the shade of what used to be the Palestinian city, of course, demolished uh, uh, in the year 48. So we are talking about a very simple uh, group of people, and, and my grandmother was just one of them. And uh, as I, sh I mentioned, she, she never, she, 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 she didn't know uh, to read, but she was a, a very great storyteller. And, and it's not only folkloristic stories uh, about Sandok al-Ajab who used to tell stories or the storyteller uh, when she was a kid who used to tour the villages and tell stories, but also a lot of stories from, from the Quran, prophet stories, fairy tale stories. And, and, uh, and I used to be a very uh, scared, frightened kid. My wife says that I'm still, I'm grown up, but I'm still scared uh, in the dark, but anyway. Uh, and and we, we uh, my grandmother used to live in our house and and, uh, and my parents never allowed me to sleep with them so I sneaked every night I waited till my parents go to bed and then I go to my grandmother's room and just listen to her stories if I if I have if I have this uh, 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 some kind of longing to to childhood it is 
uh, there uh, beside my grandmother l- listening to her stories stories that she kept telling again and again and uh, and uh, and of course beside all of these wonderful stories about Shatter Hassan and different stories it was also her true story her personal true story uh, many stories about about the war and believe me we talk a lot in in Israel and in Israeli studies about narrative and the struggle between narratives. My grandmother got no idea what the word narrative means. <laughs> so, 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 this, the, the, so, so there were many, many stories that I, that I, that uh, that uh, I heard so many times uh, about the war, about how um, uh, how tough was the war, and about her uh, husband, uh, my grandfather. Uh, uh, my grandfather was killed in the war in 48. And, uh, and I listened to these stories. Uh, it was part of my childhood. And I was always trying to imagine my, my grandmother telling me how she, she, uh, she used to, to run away when there were battles around uh, uh, Tira, and there were a lot of fighting around Tira uh, during the war uh, um, uh, with my father. My father was born in the year 47. So he was a few months when, when, when his uh, uh, when his uh, father was killed, uh, it, it running to the to the mountains in Tulkarim and Kalkilia to hide and uh, uh, to take cover of the of the fights, and then I always imagined her there, and uh, and maybe the saddest thing about 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 uh, the story is that she always took her uh, uh, white khirka, uh, uh, how it's called, I don't know, it's this Arab thing. <laughs> That you cover your head with, and and it's, w- w- every time in the, this special moment that she talked, and they told us that the war was over, and then I said, okay, I have to bring food from the fields to the to the orphans to her kids, and then she always cried when she remembers and told me the story that she went out of the village to her fields, still actually. Uh, 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 owned or, or uh, registered by her name uh, and the soldier told her that she doesn't have uh, uh, no more land anymore so actually the land of of that's the story story of uh, one of the many stories is the land so actually the the piece of land uh, that remained for for my grandmother and the family is the is the this small piece of land nothing to compare uh, uh, with the family land uh, outside the the municipality, I don't know how to call it, uh, uh, in Tira. And actually, my grandmother used to work as a fruit picker uh, 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 most of her life. And she managed also to send my father um, in the year 66 to the Hebrew University. But that, 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 that was her job. And that is, I think, the, the story of, of, uh, of most of the people who remained in Israel. And, uh, and, and Tira was just a, um, a perfect place for me to grow up, to be honest. I didn't know, I, I knew that my grandfather was killed, but I didn't know exactly what, what is Zionism and what are Jewish people, what does that mean exactly. We used to live in Tira and we barely uh, met uh, Israelis or Jewish people. I think that there was this, uh, uh, when there were this discounts in Kfar Saba for in the 80s, the, there was this uh, the pita that you can buy a pita, and you can take how much falafel that you you, you can afford. And my father, as a communist, uh, used to take us to Kfar Saba to abuse the the Israeli falafel, which uh, which became <laughs> Israeli. Uh, but but uh, that's the story of Tira, and they think very much that the the, the 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 Arabs, the Palestinians inside Israel, are always very proud of. Uh, not becoming refugees. One of the things also of the stories of my grandmother and my parents is the land and how holy is the land and how important Tira is. And the uh, the land is like a family honor and the one who sells his land, it's a big disgrace and it's, it's, it's something that you grew up with. But I think that that we are refugees and I think that we are a very good example to show that you can be uh, 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 a war refugee even if you stayed in your village and in your home. I don't think that uh, um, uh, uh, that the situation of being a Palestinian citizen of Israel is easier and I'll explain that uh, of course it's easier now uh, than being a refugee 
in refugee camps in Lebanon and different places. Uh, but I think that yes, we, we became we became refugees in in in, in our homeland, and uh, uh, culturally and nationally refugees. We're talking here about again a poor minority, a poor population, a poor communities who are not really nationally aware that the the, the 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 Arab nationality or the Palestinian nationality started started I don't know uh, in this area actually. But but I I'm, I'm not sure how. How many of the uh, of the falakhim, the peasants that uh, uh, remained in Israel, were nationally uh, aware? So we were disconnected from the year 48 till 66, till sorry, till 67, uh, from the rest of the Arab world, and we became uh, uh, um, refugees in in, in Israel, uh, disconnected uh, culturally and nationally from the rest of the Arab world till the year 66, as you well know. Uh, they used to live under a military regime. One, one of the stories that my father uh, used to tell us is that, uh, is that the only day in, uh, under military regime, it means that you need a permission to get out of your village uh, to the Israeli town or city. And, and only on the Israeli Independence Day, it was allowed to go out from the village without, uh, without permission. So my father said always that the few, the few cars and trucks that they have in the village, all the kids will will jump on uh, on the cars and trucks and go to Kfar Saba to celebrate the independent day only because it's the only day that they can leave the village. Um, uh, so yes. And uh, and of course and of course Tira of uh, uh, Tira the village it's it's a very sad story and when I talk about Tira I'm talking here about the meaning of homeland and many sociologists and uh, 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 mentioned that because when we talk about homeland, the, 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 the immediate meaning, if you are a Palestinian citizen of Israel, is your, is, is, is your village. Uh, uh, so Tira is the homeland. Maybe, maybe it's because, because of the military regime, maybe because the, we, I don't know. Uh, but but it's, it's very, maybe it's because, again, the land and becoming so holy. But the problem is that Tira became the homeland and it's a very sad place. It's nothing... Uh, like uh, Tira of today is nothing uh, like Tira that I used to to uh, to live in as a child, and I left Tira 23 years ago. And uh, and and actually, you don't have any alternative. It's a homeland. What used to be a, a, a very convenient for the Israelis. You are an Arab. You live in a village or a town or whatever it's called, and uh, and you go as a worker to the Israeli city. Uh, you, 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 and then by the end of the day, because it's very close, you go back to your village and you sleep there like it's a big uh, motel, cheap motel uh, uh, for workers, the, uh, this Arab village. Uh, so it was very convenient for the Israelis, unlike the foreign workers now, for some of the Israelis, which can be cultural or, uh, 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 or social uh, problem because they have to stay in Tel Aviv or Kfar Saba or whatever. So what used to be uh, the expectation of the Israeli from, from us also became the expectation of, of ourselves nationally. Uh, the village is the place that you belong to. That's your homeland. You got no other place. It was very clear since the beginning by my parents and my, by my grandmother that all, even if you go to study in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv or, or, or uh, uh, wherever you, you like, this is your, ha your home. You have no place but Tira. And actually, till now, I think that I have no place uh, but Tira. Until five years ago, every time that I visit my parents, and I do visit my parents twice a week because of the identity of the kids or whatever. No, because I like my family, although my mother is the, the worst uh, cook ever. Uh, uh, till five years ago, my father kept saying that to me, that I have nothing to look for in Jerusalem. You are just wasting your time and money and look at your kids and what's going to happen to them. So, so Tira became the homeland and the village uh, became, became the only alternative for the Arabs for many years to protect their identity and to protect their culture and not to become a total Israeli. Not that we can't be total Israelis at all, but in, the, in that sense that... that the, the folkloristic, uh, sometimes uh, uh, religious maybe, uh, is your only identity that you have to 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 protect. So, 
So most of the Arabs in Israel do live in their villages, and they think this is the major, no, there are many major problems, a lot of <coughs> problems, but one of the major problems is the fact that you live next to your parents, and and it created some kind of mutation called the Arab, the Arab village or the Arab town, mega village, let's call it, because, because in Israel, if the population uh, of, a, of a village uh, is over uh, 20,000 uh, uh, inhabitants, it, it bec becomes uh, immediately a town or a city. But it doesn't, doesn't mean any, uh, anything of a city. Uh, even Nazareth, the biggest uh, Arab city, is actually a big village based on family structure. And one of the problems that it's, it, it looks the same, it's just bigger with the same families. So the immediate connection is to the family. I, and they don't think that, I cannot see really a way that you can break through the circle, circles of family structure and create any kind of democracy or, or modernization in, in such a structure. And, uh, and, uh, and now there is the municipality, uh, um, uh, the local uh, government elections in, in October, I think. It's huge fights, and they can understand that because, because be and, and it's family. It's based on family connections, the elections. It's not really democratic. We can't re really talk about democracy, uh, although Israel is a democracy. But, but uh, uh, when it comes to the Palestinian citizens, the Arabs in Israel, uh, we cannot really talk about about uh, about uh, real democracy. Uh, even when it comes to the Knesset uh, elections, it's still based on family uh, structure and and uh, relationship in many in many many times. So and it's really sad because because sometimes I can uh, one one of the the real important elections for the Arabs is the municipality elections, the local elections, because if your family wins the uh, the municipality. It means that 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 uh, uh, that you have the control uh, uh, on the um, uh, uh, the employer uh, number one in the in the Arab village, which is the education system and uh, and uh, to be a clerk or to work for the municipality. So that's the reason it, it's important. And sometimes I really feel so sad when I listen to the the candidates in Tira, for example, now, they all talk about the future of our kids and the future of the, of the youth. And, and in many, many ways, it's look at us, how we turn to be. And they're not mentioning the crime. I will, I will get to that if I don't fall asleep. Um, uh, and, and you feel this kind of uh, uh, nostalgia, 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 nostalgia. nostalgia. <laughs> When they talk about the Tira or what it used to be, like we, 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 are, we are yearning for the Arab village uh, in our imagination that doesn't exist and, anymore, and we refuse to understand that it doesn't exist anymore, that the homeland, cannot, this Tira cannot really be a solution for the youth and the, and the children. It cannot be. It, uh, it, the, the, I don't know how to, to, to make that happen. And, and, and that, that, that is one of the sad stories. And the reason that my father stopped telling me, why don't you come to Tiro back? And he accepts the fact that I live in, even in a Jewish neighborhood. I, I really hate the title Jewish neighborhood. I, 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 I live in, 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 in a neighborhood in West uh, Jerusalem. Uh, it's a very good neighborhood. We're the only Arab family there. But, <laughs> uh, but, but the reason he stopped because because life in Tira of today became not worth living like it used to be because of crime be becoming the the, the 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 major power, and not only in Tira, uh, uh, for for most of the the Arab villages in Israel, we cannot really talk about uh, enforcement of law. Uh, when it comes to the Arab citizens, Palestinian citizens in their towns and villages. That, that was the reason. Actually, we are so busy in our personal security that we, are, we don't have the time to think about the future of the kids and the future of Tira uh, and, and how we can break through uh, 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 this family structure because you, there is no any kind of uh, urbanization, uh, urbanization uh, Ayur, urbanization uh, 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 for us. 
And for the Israelis, it's amazing because in the Israelis, they always talk about mentality. It's like this, the, it's the Arab mentality to live in the Arab village. Actually, people from Tira before 48 used to, to it, was, it was rare, but, uh, but people uh, used to leave Tira in order to work uh, in Jaffa, for example. But, but now it's the Arab mentality. I, I'm, I've been asked so many times by Israelis, why did you choose to leave your village? Why don't you live in our Arab village? And my immediate answer is, go ahead, you yourself live in an Arab village. <laughs> and actually, when I, but but it's it's much more complicated than that. Actually, this simple that that should be natural if you are educated uh, Arab who studied in the in the universities. It's it's almost impossible to move from your village to a city or or look or seek for a city life. Not only because because of the expectation of the family. Not anymore. Now we are trying to get out of the villages. Uh, uh, and uh, the Arab towns, but it's really very difficult. Actually, if you are an Arab, you 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 you, you don't have the ability, uh, or you don't have access to more than eighty percent of the land of Israel, uh, 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 owned by Minhal uh, Mekarkei Israel and Karen Kayemet. As you well know, uh, since '48, not even one Arab village or town was established. Uh, on the other hand, more than 700 uh, um, um, community uh, um, uh, settlements, not settlements in the West Bank, but Moshavim and Kibbutzim were established in Israel. Uh, I'm sure that you will know about the Bagatz Qa'adan, the case of Qa'adan. He's an Arab, he, and he bought a land in, in, in a Moshav called Katsir in Israel, and he really needed to... Uh, 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 to petition to the uh, Supreme Court of Justice in Israel in order to let an Arab live in a Jewish in a Jewish Moshav. And, uh, and actually immediately after that the Knesset brought a new law called Okef Qadan, which means uh, we have really <laughs> wonderful names like Judaizing the Galil and uh, Galili. And uh, Okef Kadan uh, passing by Kadan, I don't know, like fuck Kadan law. Sorry for that. Uh, which 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 means actually that every moshav or yeshuv and every uh, community in Israel can can make this uh, um, acceptance committees, and uh, and based on uh, criteria of cultural differences, uh, 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 you have to pass this uh, this uh, this committees, and and it was very clear that it meant to stop uh, and exclude Arabs uh, from moving from their villages to, to land that owned by, uh, by the state, the Israeli, the Kakal and the Jewish agency. And of course, for the cities, we, are, we all know about the, the rabbis' letters, and they can tell you it's really very difficult. Even for me, it was very, very difficult, uh, and I'm a known writer in Israel, to find a Jewish owner who was ready to, uh, to sell me his flat. I received answers like, I have no problem but I need to ask my neighbors and th things like that. And according actually to Amjad, the protagonist of uh, the main character of Arab labor, uh, he moved to a Jewish neighborhood. It was because, because this Jewish uh, uh, owner that sold, sold him the house really wanted to, to, to um, uh, link home to revenge of the neighbors uh, <laughs> because he really hated them for, for a reason. Um, uh, uh, and it's... Uh, and it's um, 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 again, it's 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 really very difficult now to talk about the 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 the, the future of uh, being uh, an Arab Palestinian citizen of citizen of Israel, um, because the equation was always okay. We know you are discriminated in Israel, and. Uh, uh, I mean the Israelis, we know that you are discriminated, but you, you are not supposed to compare yourself to, uh, to the people in Kfar Saba uh, as citizens. You have to compare yourself to the poverty neighborhoods in, in Cairo and in Syria. And, and, and actually we did that for many, many years. That, 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 that was the reason. And of course, after meeting also the Palestinians in, in 67, I mean the Palestinians in the West Bank and, and Gaza, we knew very well that we, we have some some uh, advantages of being citizens of the of the of Israel. Uh, uh, we are not uh, under immediate uh, occupation. We can work. We have security insurance, and things like that. But sometimes, to be honest, yes, it, it is very difficult to talk about that these days. Very difficult days, and and uh, 
um, but I think that the, the way I look at the, um, and I'm not a person of academy at all, but I think I, um, that the future uh, of the Arab community in Israel is very, very dark. I really cannot see if the policy of the government and not establishing new cities, I, I'm against separating Arabs and Jews in new cities, but if, if that's the only way, and still we don't want Arabs and Jews to live together just like in a, I don't know if it's in a normal country, it happens nothing normal about this place, but you know, it's just a normal country that everyone hates the government and live according to his bank account. And um, uh, um, so I, I really don't know. And sometimes I do think that sometimes um, uh, that the, 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 even S Syria, for example, despite the massacres happening there, and they know that uh, maybe they will have better future. At least they are they, they, they are making their future. I don't know what a kind of future it's going to be because I am also a student of the of the Israeli method. Uh, called the Arab identity. Actually, I, I'm sure that you know very well that it's not a national fight or a religion fight or an economy or a fight about land. It, 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 it's, it's, it's a mentality, it's a cultural fight. And when Israelis use the word culture, they, 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 they use actually uh, the, the meaning of... of uh, it's not the music that we, we play, uh, but it's the mentality. It's, it's, uh, it's the nature of the Arab. And, and actually the people in Syria uh, uh, Iraq and uh, anywhere else in the Arab world is is giving more uh, uh, proofs for the Israelis that we are okay because it is their mentality. The killing is their mentality. Even when it comes to crime in in, in the Arab towns and villages, it didn't happen ten years ago. Uh, it's uh, and, and and it is. Um, uh, of course, the responsibility of the government. We are still part of Israel. Uh, so it's the Arab mentality. We are okay because it's the Arab mentality, and what's happening in Syria is is is, is part of the Arab uh, um, of the Arab mentality. And of course, no one talks about the European mentality. Millions and hundreds of millions were killed in Europe, but it was not the killing was not part of the of the or European uh, uh, mentalities. But w when it comes to us, it's their it's their mentality. It's their mentality to live in their village, and it's mentality to kill each other. We just love to shoot one another and it's 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 we, ca we cannot live without it and uh, and uh, it's 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 uh, it's, uh, it's it's really very very sad and uh, and uh, unf unfortunately um, but still but still i think that uh, that uh, uh, um, that maybe yes. Although I am a writer and probably I will stay in Jerusalem in Ramadan and say, oh, you know, I write in Hebrew and they will stay in Israel. But it looks that the future of people in Syria and Egypt is more uh, uh, promising, let's say, <laughs> uh, how sad and straight to say, than the future of the Arabs in Israel. I really cannot say, see a way out of it. It's, it you have two alternatives. And the, the other alternative is really, really very, very difficult and tough because you you cannot be accepted by Israelis unless you are Jewish. And um, one is to keep living in the same form of living in your town and village uh, and ask for, uh, I don't know, more budgets from the government and make the education system better, which is not, not, not the reality right now. It's just getting worse. And or move to the, to the, to the, to the Israeli town and city. And then, and then you'll need... Uh, to take off many identity, nationality, and to try to be uh, uh, the good Arab. The good Arab in the sense that, okay, you'll, st you'll still have your mentality for the Israelis, but at least now you are so much educated that, that at least you can thank Israel uh, for, for its being, or at least admit that, it's, that your situation is much better. There is no way that you can live in an Israeli city or town and keep telling the, the, the Palestinian narrative to yourself. There is no way, uh, there is a way, but it's a very difficult way to live in Israeli uh, society and to, be, uh, and to want to be accepted without accepting the, the Zionist narrative 
uh, for Israel. Actually, to be honest, if it was the, the story, and I know the story a little bit, the history, I heard it from my grandmother. If it was, okay, we, we really beated you badly in 48, you suckers. You were really very bad. We won the war. Just shut up and, and be quiet and thank God that we let you live. I would accept that. <laughs> I, I know how to be a loser. But the fact that we have, we have to admit that they are right and they are, we are always right and still now, uh, everything done in Israel and everything in the Israeli policy, including uh, uh, building new settlements in the West Bank and taking your land and uh, taking the land in the Negev uh, is, is right. It's because we don't have any uh, 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 other way and this is the only right way. So it's, it's really very, very, very complicated situation. Uh, um, uh, but again, and okay, it's boring. Sure. One of the things that we talk about now, and is is the, there's the peace negotiations now going on. No one, not the Israelis, and not the, not the Palestinians at all, think that anything will happen with the peace uh, uh, negotiation and talks. But already, whenever there's a, a peace negotiations. There are voices and new um, uh, people uh, specialized, uh, specialized in demographic problems. I love them, the demographic Israeli. I hope you're not sitting here uh, suggesting this, uh, 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 this offer to get rid of as much Arabs, uh, 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 drawing the, the, the green line or the border again. Actually, I don't know what was the reason that they that, that Tira is in the uh, in Israel and the, and Kalkilia is in the West Bank. But anyway, so this wet dream. And to be honest, I think that uh, that most of the the Israelis, I'm not talking about the the Arab citizens of Israel, would be very happy to get rid of uh, I don't know 500,000 uh, uh, Palestinians. Just drawing the maps again, we are poor, we are criminals, and 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 homeless. There are many Israelis that already uh, can prepare by themselves. But, but so, so again, this plan of getting rid of Wadi Ara and the uh, Amisholash area and to be part of the Palestinian Authority, uh, Authority. I'm not talking about transfer, like get from Tira to the, to the West Bank. This is your homeland. You're claiming that Tira is your homeland. You'll stay in, <laughs> yes, you'll stay in Tira. And actually, we are fixing your also national identity problem. Uh, uh, and you will be Palestinian, and that's it. And if you ask most of the Arabs, they will be really very scared of that, of, of the fact. And most of the Israelis, actually, Lib Lib Lieberman now uses the, the term of Palestinians uh, when he talks about the Palestinian citizens of Israel. We used to be the Arabs in Israel, and Emil Habibi said that it's an awful name, and then we became Arabs in Is the Israeli Arabs, sorry, and then we are the Arabs in Israel. And for many, many years, we used to, or the politicians, used to use the, the Arab community, Al-Jamahir Al-Arabiya fi Israel. It was okay. Recently, it's, it's the Palestinian citizen of Israel, and it, it takes me time to, uh, to, to, to get used to it. And actually, if you're, if you're, if you're super uh, Palestinian, should, you should say Palestinian citizens of Israel by force. But, but most of the Palestinians would disagree with uh, uh, with this plan. Of course, it's 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 uh, 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 and and in a very sad way. Also, I have a very strong feeling that if you ask the people in in, in East Jerusalem uh, that were occupied in '67, they also will refuse to be part of the Palestinian state because first of all, there is no Palestinian state. So when you when you come to the Arabs in Tira and say, "Would you like to be part of Palestinian state?" You think immediately about the fence and uh, not not being able to. Uh, uh, to work, and uh, I'm not talking here about about democracy at all, because as you know, according to our mentality, we don't care about democracies. And uh, but, but I'm talking about economical reasons, and 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 uh, uh, and uh, but, but and f for me, I just saw this uh, another professor now with new maps getting rid of of Tehran and several places. Uh, um, as a suggestion on an offer of land exchanging with with, uh, with Israel, and the immediate feeling for me it was that Israel is betraying me. I'm 
So, okay, I, I need to know where is the perfect place in Tira if we become part of the Palestinian uh, uh, state to put the Katyusha and uh, and uh, and uh, Nakfar Saba. Uh, sh surely the, the Palestinian Authority people will uh, will arrest us immediately. But then I thought, why is this feeling of revenge or being betrayed by the Israelis? Our life is really bad there. And I think, and, and then it took me a while, uh, because, uh, because it is a threat. And because it was never a plan uh, 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 that we or the, there is no, we cannot really talk about leadership inside the Arab, uh, uh, the local uh, Arab uh, uh, Palestinian society. If it was a plan that, or a demand of, of ours that we wanted to be part in a Palestinian, if we know if one day there will be a Palestinian state, I think that it would look different. To be honest, I, I know that it might be, of course, if there will be a state, and I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, if it's a plan, but it might be, and I, I don't know how it's going to look like so many settlers and villagers, but uh, uh, I mean separated places, so you have, again, to disconnect this community again. But I think that, that, uh, that uh, although more than 90% of the Arabs, if they are asked, will say, no, we don't want to be part of the Palestinian state, uh, in this situation, of course, uh, I don't mean if, if Ramallah one day will become the Silicon Valley of the West Bank uh, and then the Middle East, I'm sure also people from Kfar Saba will, will try to find Palestinian girls in order to get green cards. It's, I'm not talking about that. Uh, uh, but I do think that, that being part, because people in the villages in the West Bank do leave their villages in order to live in Ramallah, because Ramallah is a city. and uh, and. Uh, uh, and there are different, although the situation is very, very sad, and they live in, 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 under, under uh, immediate, uh, immediate occupation. But, but I think that, that it can uh, uh, promise a little bit of a better future than, than, than to stay in the state uh, uh, of Israel the way it is. Of course, the wet dream of, uh, of all uh, Arabs now is, is just one state solution, but but to be realistic, it's, uh, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Um, uh, and that's it, I think. And um, um, I just wanted to, to say that uh, uh, um, that I don't want to talk about the meaning of being Israeli. I don't want to talk about about uh, about about being a citizen of a, of a state that. Uh, uh, that was not established for you. Uh, the opposite is true, actually. It's a state for many people who never lived in, in Israel, don't speak one, not even one sentence in Hebrew. They have no idea who won the, the, the big brother in, uh, in Israel, but still it's their country more than, 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 than one who controls the language and live here and pay taxes and, uh, and live in Israel. But, uh, and there is a struggle, and th there is a very huge struggle. What I'm trying to say is that that when I grew up as a kid, this fear, the stories of my grandmother of lo losing her land, was was which 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 is the real meaning of the Nakba was so scary because I really till now know that house cannot be a safe place that that it's it's not a secure place. And I wondered for many many years if I really want to tell my kids the same stories that I heard the truth. Uh, uh, as I heard it from 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 my family, do I really want to create this uh, uh, Palestinian identity uh, uh, and, and let them think fear and know that that house is not a secure place? Uh, and uh, and again, this there is no one Israeli story, and and my kids do study in the bilingual schools in Jerusalem. And when you hear the Israeli stories, and it's since the age of three, actually in the Arab schools, it takes us years to understand what really happened because we study in an in, in Israeli education system and we are actually, we study about pioneers and it, so, so somewhere in high school, you start to figure out what's the meaning of the Nakba and what really happened in 48 and what's the meaning of, of, of becoming a refugee. But in the Israeli schools, since the, the, the very early age, it's very, very nationalist, and and um, and uh, it affects the kids. So I remember one day my daughter, 
uh, came back home and said, why did the Arabs didn't accept the partition uh, uh, plan? Well, and sorry, why didn't you accept the partition plan? <laughs> said, come here, baby, I will let you know now. Uh, uh, I, I will tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. And I really don't know. I hope one day this, the meaning of citizenship will, will, uh, will, will be a reality. I, have, I, I don't know how it's going to happen while the state of Israel is called Israel, which means Jewish, uh, and, 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 uh, and, uh, uh, and while you are nothing to do of the story, uh, as a Palestinian Israel, you are not part of the story. I don't know if one day there will be one story that citizens of Israel will uh, or this region will, will, tell, will tell kids uh, uh, just one story that can, that can have uh, more than the Jewish uh, uh, Zionist side. But I really hope, and, and uh, to be honest, I'm just, I'm just trying to teach my kids or raise them up in, in a Jewish neighborhood, unfortunately, on the basics only, the really the basics of democracy. All people are equal. Uh, and when it comes to education and identity and citizenship, it's just like the, the song Imagine is my method. And really, it sounds like a Miss Universe contest, uh, not, n not anything more than that. Okay, usually it's uh, questions, but I, I am sure that you don't have any questions. <laughs> I don't know if it's accepted. I'm sorry for this uh, talk and uh, wish you a good uh, night. We do have time for just a few questions, so if anyone would like to um, commence proceedings. Yes, sir. I'm Shinhan from the University of Strasbourg. I basically agree with all what you said, uh, but uh, I would like uh, to hear something more, uh, the next step, in a way, in the narrative or in the storytelling. Uh, in Israel now, uh, we talk a lot about the uh, question of uh, uh, cleavages, the religious uh, and uh, uh, non-religious uh, Ashkenaz, etc., especially the, the new television uh, program. It's definitely that the main problem is the Arabs and the Jews in Israel, whether they'll be peace with the Palestinians or the Dun. And uh, this, this problem is really the crucial. And as you call it, it's definitely that this situation is become worse and worse. But how worse do you see it to become, and what do you think can be there? an answer? And whether this recent uh, events or uh, attitude of different Israeli problem for the Israeli democracy because uh, as sociologists like to call Israel now ethnocracy but because it, it, it's a democracy only if you are if you, if, if you are in the Jewish group uh, if it's gonna bring to clashes I think that the, 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 uh, the economical situation and, uh, and living in overcrowded places is is the is the major reason for for, for uh, that will bring to clashes of course no one will say it, it, it is it is ignoring and uh, uh, and neglecting the, 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 the Arab uh, community for, uh, for many years. It will be, of course, because of national uh, reasons, and some, of course, immediately it will turn because of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the religion. And I, I can promise you that in, in, in two days, uh, the Israeli media, if it will keep the same, and the politicians will talk about the Arab mentality, and we, we are <laughs> just like in Gaza, uh, uh, last war, uh, I heard this very, uh, very known Israeli journalist uh, interviewing a military Israeli man. I said, actually, we are facing irrational uh, enemy. Like it's it's nothing to do but but fight them. Uh, if there are going to be clashes, I think that 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 will be the reason of uh, not the reason, but. Uh, uh, 
of course, based on nationality and based of discrimination. Uh, uh, I don't know. I really don't know. It, only few people till now, because because it's it's just uh, it's um, uh, the equation of uh, of Rebbe uh, Chayef said. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, so till now, watching what's what's uh, happening in the West Bank and Syria and, and <coughs> Egypt, it's it's a little bit okay. We should maybe shut up meanwhile and see. I'm not sure what will happen. Uh, and they wrote that in one of my columns, actually. If uh, when when the when the when the uh, um, uh, the revolution in, in uh, Tunisia and Egypt started, we were really really very happy. Unlike the Israelis, people, young people, young Arabs in the streets of Tunisia and Cairo, calling at the beginning for freedom and democracy were really a very huge uh, disappointment for the Israelis. What happened to the Arab mentality, for that sake? And we were very happy. And I wrote in my column because I was naive and, and stupid enough to think that it can happen. I still believe that it can happen one day. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, uh, that, OK, the, 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 you, al you always ask us to, to look at the Arab world and keep quiet. So what's, what, 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 what are we supposed now to do? Should we also go out in the streets and fight for, uh, for equality? And I'm not talking about only equality, when economical or, or uh, equality, but to be uh, uh, accepted as equal citizens inside uh, uh, the, the, uh, the state of, uh, of, of Israel. So I don't know. It's, it's really also uh, uh, depends on the Arab world, because, because uh, uh, I don't know how 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 we should get uh, disappointed or uh, uh, or lose hope in order to go out in the streets without without having some hope uh, from the situation surrounding us. I mean Syria and uh, Egypt uh, uh, mainly, um, uh, but I really don't know. Meanwhile, it's it's uh, it's. So that the Arabs should live in their in their Arab villages in their ghettos, and meanwhile, if there are problems or killing or crime going on there, it's not it's not really a part of a, of a problem of Israel. Illegal weapon is 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 is, is, is not really. Uh, it doesn't look. It doesn't seem like it's a real Israeli problem. Um, so I don't know what should happen. Again, I said there there there, there is reality, and there is what what. The, the imagined uh, dream. I think that, you know, that just the basics. I think that that Israel should maybe first of all decide what are the borders of the state. I really don't care, and I would very much love to have also the West Bank and Gaza inside the state of Israel. But an, anything, that's, just let us know what are the the, the 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 borders of the state of Israel, and let's say that everyone who lives in the state of Israel is a citizen of the state of Israel. <laughs> And let's say maybe it's about time uh, to close uh, the borders of Israel. And they wish actually to, to live in a, in a state that can be a, a shelter for anyone uh, 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 who's under uh, 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 threat. And of course, if it's for Jewish, but we have committees. It's uh, acceptance committees for uh, Jews uh, who want to move to Israel. They have to prove that they are suffering there or they have money. It's, 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 uh, uh, but I also wish very much that it also will be the situation for the Palestinians as well, uh, uh, in, in order to become a citizen of Israel. Really, the basics of uh, of uh, of a modern uh, uh, democracy. I, 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 you know, sometimes. Well, now in uh, in Gavad Sarfati, the French hill in uh, uh, in Jerusalem, the. Uh, um, uh, I just read it in the news, in the in the Friday news. Taala, uh, uh, yes, between Al Azariya and uh, this neighborhood, disconnected from the Arabs. And this neighborhood, actually, it, it was occupied in '67. Many Arabs do like to live there because it's very close to the Mount Scopus uh, uh, campus, university, the Hebrew University, and many Arabs. Like the very educated and, and and everyone, believe me, wants to be a neighbor of the of, of the Arabs in, in this place, and then bringing that, for example, to living together, and then it's it's really very very sad when I when you read uh, 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 an interview with Rosh Menhalet, the one who was in charge 
uh, of this neighborhood. And the reason is that he's really very worried about the Arabs living in the, uh, or the number of, uh, of the Arabs who move to this neighborhood. And you can actually hear Arabic in coffee shops. And maybe, and maybe the one day they will ask for, for, uh, for uh, an Arab uh, kindergarten. And maybe one day also they will ask for an Arab mosque. And it's like a shock for everyone, actually. Talking about a mosque or an Arab kindergarten in Kfar Saba is a huge, is a huge uh, shock for the Israelis and, and, to be honest, also for the Arabs. And, and why not? I always, I always in my, my talks to Israelis and the Arabs, I, I tell them that, that, that there are mosques in London, I'm sorry for that, but there are mosques in London and, and churches in London and synagogues in London as well as in New York. It can happen. Uh, uh, and there are Jewish schools all over. And it can happen. Um, so, uh, and always the, 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 the Israeli immediate question is, uh, as, as if you will let us live in your villages. I think I would love to see as, as much. Uh, I, I think that you have to be a very, uh, 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 very, I don't know, not rational Israeli to live in an Arab, in an Arab village. You have no reason to live there. But, but, but I, I wish that it can happen one day. Uh, really, just like that. And uh, again, as I mentioned, I hate the, I hate uh, uh, this Jewish neighborhood thing or an Arab village and an Arab town. And uh, and I think that that there are that the language and the uh, and the narrative and all these stories are now very very holy. And even the use of Hebrew is is, is so holy for uh, for for the Israelis and also for the Palestinians. In, inside Israel. Of course, Hebrew is part of our daily life, but when it comes to cultures, it can be really like neglecting your culture and your identity. But all these things are now holy because of the situation, <coughs> because you are a demographic, uh, demographic th uh, 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 threat, because you are the enemy, because you are a fifth column, because you are rejected, uh, and because there is an occupation, and there is an unsolved problem, a huge problem, uh, not solved with the Palestinians. So th I, I think, I think if, if there was a kind of peace agreement or, 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 or uh, another kind of, uh, of, uh, uh, of government or, uh, or, or policy, things would can look a little bit easier. Now it doesn't look good at all. Interesting. I have time for one, one more question. So I think gentlemen, sorry. Sorry. I think you asked about the, the success of your TV program and the Kabbalah Arabic. How do you explain it? A few uh, weeks ago, there was a column by uh, Yair Asuli. You read it, I see. Where he explained the success of your uh, program uh, that is not uh, so evident when you are criticizing Jewish racism. Joking. And he said, the point is that this, this is the first Mizrahi program. <laughs> As a matter of fact, the Mizrahi Jews identify with your critiques of the treatment of the Jews to the to the Arabs. They identify with the grandfather like their own grandfather. They identify with the culture. So, do you agree with him? Do you have other explanations? Do you think in uh, in this borderline between Jews and Arabs and the possibility to be both Jew and Arab? There's some hope. There's hope between Jews and Arabs or Jew, Jews from Arab countries? <coughs> Maybe both. I don't know. Well, you well, every is sitting here. I cannot talk uh, now. Big uh, note. Um, well, it explains actually. Uh, it, 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 uh, I, I have no idea. If I, 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 I didn't read the, I, I, the, the article by uh, Yair Solin. I assume that he writes in Haaretz. I know that he writes in Haaretz, so maybe that's the reason. I, <laughs> I, I hate my job. No, I don't know that he wrote that. But it's, it, but, but it's, it, 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 it's, it's always amazing that, that, uh, that a lot of Mizrahi people, they, the other day, the taxi driver, when he said, it's you, you are talking, he was shouting, and he's like a, a Bitar fan, totally. I couldn't understand how can he love such a show showing a Palestinian flag uh, in the last episode. And now, actually, the last episode of today is, is a very, very sad, not, nothing to do with the comedy. It's usually a, a lot of humor. Uh, 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 but we are dealing with also very, 
very complicated uh, uh, issues. <laughs> but yes, I, I, I thought I, I, I really understand. Uh, I, 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 I never thought about it like that. But but yes, it, it happened to me so many times that that uh, that uh, that uh, Jews from Arab countries say that you are talking about me, and I see myself there. Maybe one of the reasons because, because I, I'm always aware actually of of that of that fact. And the first, for example, the first episode of third season. Amj Amjad goes to the Big Brother show uh, to show that Arabs and Jews can live together and the, uh, as soon as he enters the house his mission is to hide his identity and then there is, uh, there is this uh, and the rest have to know who is the Arab and actually everyone because Amjad of course he talks about his father from Krakow and all the Israeli uh, story that he wish that it is his story about his father coming from Krakow uh, directly to the Palmach and same things like that uh, uh, they blame the, the, the Mizrahi guy. And by the end, he shouts, D did you think that I am the Arab? Did you think that I'm an Arab? And my answer was, while writing that and watching that in editing room, is yes, yes, actually, <laughs> you, you are. But I'm very, very careful. I'm very, very careful. I'm very, very careful using the... the I, I, I refused one of the episodes in the second season was dealing with with the with the road and the war in Gaza, and I refused totally. Although the, the broadcasting company, I said, well, it's not reliable that you are bringing Ashkenazi family to be in the road. I said it should be Ashkenazi family. And one actually, the the, the, the most racist characters in in the show are actually left wing Israelis. That the first time that they met Amjad, told him we both merits. Yeah. So maybe that's the reason that <laughs> that. Uh, uh, but but it was but it was I, I love merits by the way like I don't love merits but it's better than other groups uh, so, 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 so 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 maybe 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 it is the reason but uh, 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 but I don't know I, to be honest I as I just says uh, in one of the episodes uh, he, he 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 his dreams become true he 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 got this dream and night that. The neighbors, the Ashkenazi neighbors with the merits bought uh, an espresso uh, a machine. And actually they bought it last night. I dreamt you bought a machine. I said, it's very typical to your Mizrahi uh, 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 culture. I said, I don't know. I never met any. <laughs> so it's just like me. I don't know. But I think it's successful. I, 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 it's really, I don't know why it's successful. I, I truly believe that people in Israel, we are frightened and we are scared. But I think that... that, that, that when it comes to a personal relationship with the Mizrahis and uh, more than the Ashkenazi, there is no real war going on. The real problem is, and your identity and your uh, mentality and your problem and you are the Arab enemy, uh, it's there when you, when, when you are not an individual and you turn for them to be part of this, uh, for this, for this group. So maybe that's the hope that I keep telling myself, that I have really wonderful relationships with my neighbors, and it was not easy. I was really very scared when I moved to a Jewish neighborhood at the beginning. And I see my kids studying in the bilingual school, and they see that that they sleep over, and, and other kids sleep over, and they can control two languages, and they have the Nakba day in their school, and they have also the Independence Day in, the, in their school. So I, I can see <coughs> that it can, can, can work in small groups, uh, of course. And they, and they do very much think that politicians and decisions can make a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of differences. I do remember very well that that one week before the the, the second intifada in uh, the, the end of September uh, 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 broke out. One week <coughs> before that, I spent time drinking beers and listening to jazz music in, in clubs in in Ramallah. And I was there, and it was my first actually war to see how uh, I am not. Actually, I realized that I'm not a citizen, and it's. Uh, uh, anymore with the October when the, 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 the Arabs in Israel uh, took, pa take, took part uh, in the demonstrations. I was there as a journalist, but I was there. And I think that we were fighting uh, 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 as citizens. We thought we are citizens fighting. It's not fight, fighting, demonst <coughs> demonstrating. For me, it was very important to be. I was a journalist, but I also noticed because please don't let that collapse. Please stop that. And of course, there were many photos and pictures and, 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 uh, and a lot of killing going on in Gaza and West Bank at that time. But everything collapsed. And in, in few seconds, uh, you become the enemy. And in few seconds, you are, you are two separating, separate fighting, fight, fighting camps. And, uh, and uh, 
and that was very, very sad, but I know that it can happen. It falls upon me to offer a vote of thanks to Syed for an informed talk. I'm listening to what he had to say. I was very much struck by an old academic joke that many of us here go around the world, we go to academic conferences, and occasionally there's always the one individual who makes a career out of giving the same paper in different forms but to uh, various conferences. And the old joke goes that on one occasion he was sitting or giving a, this paper and there was a respondent to the paper and uh, as he sat down, the respondent said, you know, I really enjoyed that paper. In fact, I always enjoy that paper. <laughs> on this occasion, I can't level that accusation against you. What you had to say was witty, it was profound. I'm sure for some of us here, it was actually difficult, perhaps uncomfortable at times. But nonetheless, it has acted as a perfect primer for many of the themes that we're going to be discussing tomorrow. And for that, we're very much in debt to you. So, Saeed, thank you very much indeed.